including um, balsamic vinegar, sardines, uh, lemon, and uh, the tomatoes are supposed to represent the color, the red, from the blood of the Israelites when they had to suffer at the hands of the Egyptians when they were slaves. And in the middle, we have a flower, um, and the chips are salting. That's where the salt, the real salt is. The flower symbolizes um, hope, and um, in springtime, the rebirth of, you know, the flowers and all that stuff, okay? <laughs> and um, we're going to read, did I read here? No, okay. Oh, and mustard, out and mustard. And then we're going to read together, please, on the back of the first page, the second paragraph, um, really? because, <clears throat> like, how could you celebrate with something bitter? Okay, so together we're going to read, clearly the Seder is about the connection between suffering and redemption. They talk about, on the next page, the Jewish concept of a true intellectual, someone for whom ideas are not mind games but tools for living. Wisdom is to be taken seriously and applied. Ideas are not to be stored in a mental filing cabinet and pulled out at dinner parties to keep everyone entertained. They're to help us change and grow. Ideas change. So here's one of the things from our group. Three out of the four of us had either had parents who were not born here or were not born here ourselves, and Tiffany, grandparents were not born here. All of them had an idea that maybe life could be different. Maybe in America, there'd be some freedom that they don't have. They were leaving behind many, many important things from their lives, but taking the adventure to a new place and a new peace. And this piece about asking questions. So one of the things that I, I know I always used to do was to try to get my children to use the Passover night to ask the people around the table who were either first, you know, had first come to this country or were first generation Americans to talk about what it was like coming here and what it was like leaving things behind, and how that exodus of theirs connected with the Passover Seder for them. And maybe even what Passover they had or didn't have because you couldn't do it in their country. Um, so we've got this potato, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> potato salad dip. Right. <laughs> and, and for me, the potatoes were very, very symbolic because my mother's family, as a number of other families we knew, were very poor in Poland. They weren't allowed this kind of living, that kind of living, these sort of possessions. So they dealt with the things that they could grow on their own, get from the land, and that's why I rejected everything except for the herbs and spices that you could grow on your own. You couldn't do balsamic vinegar. <laughs> you didn't have it there. It wasn't a possibility. So that's this, which has the matzah in it. And the other part of our theme was the haroset. And again, we used Apple. only the natural things that you could get in the country, anybody want to add anything to it? Oh, going once, corrosive. going twice, I've got to be gone. Okay. In the spirit of Pesa, uh, we have presented our food in a basket since Moses was sent down the Nile in a basket. And um, we put baskets in baskets. Okay. We have, it says here that God concocted a variety of flavors and textures. And he put emphasis on the festive meal because he wanted his people to have pleasure. So we have 
concocted a number of flavors and textures as well. Um, some of them not common in Ashkenazic families uh, on Pesach. And since Judy opened up by saying everything was either kosher for Pesach or you could use it, get it for Pesach, um, the beans, for example, are what's called kitniot, and the Ashkenazim did not eat that, uh, and most still do not. However, it has always been divisive, and the Sephardim ate it, the Ashkenazim did not eat it. There was a huge article this year, I think it was in Hadassah magazine, encouraging us to stop this practice and not be divisive, but all of us to come together. And um, I think that that's one of the things that's being asked of us here is to try to come together to enjoy life, to have um, our basic selves. Um, and so we are presenting kidney oat with, somebody tell me everything that's with, in it. Well, oh, okay. Okay, it's with red peppers, um, celery. We sauteed that together. We threw eggs in it. So we scrambled the eggs with like a fried rice, more or less. I may need a little salt or something because I was kind of afraid to put so I don't know whether mm -hmm. people are like afraid, you know. Okay, and that's 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 this, this quinoa. Quinoa is what? And I don't know what bean who made bean this. Bean, bean salad. Oh, bean salad. It's bean salad. It's got kidney beans and red peppers and tomatoes and I think celery. And carrots. And carrots. carrots. Okay. Carrots. We've got oh. eggs in here and we basically felt that this was everything from the earth, everything to, <laughs> to give us pleasure. And um, and I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> that was five minutes. Oh, Steli. I'm just you're supposed to accept it. I will, I will. All right. Therefore, it is our duty to thank, praise, laud, glorify, exalt, honor, bless, extol, and pay respect to he who did all these miracles for our ancestors and for us. He took us from slavery unto freedom, from sorrow to joy, from mourning to festivity, from darkness to bright light, from bondage to redemption. Therefore, let us recite a new song for him. Hallelujah. Praise God. And now we're up to the part of the Seder that we will look forward to, the afikoman or dessert. And going with uh, the theme here, it says, from darkness to bright light, candles are a central symbol in Judaism's example, Shabbat candles, Hanukkah candles, etc. And our campfire in the desert. <laughs> so we have our Passover s'mores, and instead of roasting weenies on the campfire, we have macabobs. They all have nuts. Take two. There's enough for two.